Thank you for listening to this edition of the Christian Car Guy podcast. It's brought to you by Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road. Mr. Quick Pick is the opportunity for you to start your own roadside assistance business. If you have more investment energy than investment capital, stop working for someone else. Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road is the opportunity to have your own home-based business, working directly with auto clubs and leveraging a national brand and marketing strategy. Mr. Quick Pick helps people who have run out of gas, lock their keys in their car, or need a jump start. An A-plus rated company with the Better Business Bureau and the three-time winner of the Member's Choice Award for customer service. This could be the chance you've been looking for to serve others at the point of crisis and even share your walk with Christ. So whether you're looking for a business opportunity or in need of emergency roadside assistance, choose Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road, mrquickpick.com. Now sit back and enjoy this podcast of the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. You've lost that driving feeling. Oh, that driving feeling. Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action, and now, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Negotiations Bible style. Bible style. Bible, 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 Bible. Negotiations Bible style. To the cross I look. And to the cross I cling. Of its suffering I do drink Sufferers fuck attack Sufferers fuck attack Suffering suck attack <laughs> Which my mother would have told you Anytime she tried to feed me a lima bean Or any other kind of bean for that matter Suffering suck attack The question Today on the Christian Car Guys show is, how long do you or will you suffer? Yes, Old Red now has 406,000 miles on it. And the question is, how long should I suffer? Bob, you got any suffering going on that you, uh, how long it's, should, should it's you pre- It's pretty amazing that uh, I had no clue what the topic was this morning. I walk in and I start to share my week with you and you start to share the topic with me and uh once again they merge in a quite fine fashion so how long do you suffer with that old car how long do you suffer with that mechanic that keeps letting you down how long do you suffer with the parts person or maybe the salesperson it's an interesting thing <laughs> love suffers long that's first corinthians thirteen four in the king james version And the more I ponder this, the better I like it, really. It's not to say it doesn't hurt, suffering that is, but it does bring life, and it brings a lot of it. The more I love Old Red, that's my 1995 Dodge Dakota. If you're just now, first time ever listening to Christian Car Guy show, yes, Robbie has a 1995 Dodge Dakota with 406,000 miles on it. But the longer I am willing to suffer with its brokenness, (laughs) would you say is the more I'm in love with it, true or false? The mechanic that brought your car back to you saying it was fixed and you drove it out and the oil had drained all out of the engine and before you got 10 miles, the engine seized, that would infuriate you, wouldn't it? Unless perhaps that mechanic was your daughter. Or how about the waiter that just messed up your order and dropped your eggs on the table and the coffee in your lap? That would cause you to get furious and leave unhappy unless perhaps... It was your best friend's son. My daughter, Mariah, she gave, for Father's Day, she gave me this amazing book. I highly recommend it. It's by Ann Voskamp. It's called The Broken Way. And in that book, Ann shares the understanding of the word patient and the word passion have the same root. What? (laughs) Passion? I'm I'm still working on that one. (laughs) Go to Webster's, check it out. It's P-A-T-I. That's the Greek root of the word patience, and it is also the Greek root of the word passion, and the word means to suffer. 
of course, I immediately grabbed up my tablet and I went and looked. And I will share with you that if you go to Webster's definition of that, <laughs> it says it's the very first listing of the definition. And then it says obsolete. <laughs> I laughed out loud when I read. I still think it's hilarious that the suffering aspect of passion is now obsolete. And I would say, unfortunately, many have bought into that idea. It's far from the truth. This insight connects really a lot of dots for me, and it really, I, I, I'm hoping with me that you'll begin to ponder this truth. And like me, I'm, I have a feeling it's going to shine brighter in your heart because passion is only found once in the King James Version of the Bible, and it's in Acts 1-3, and it says, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion. You know, that movie, The Passion of the Christ, it had to do with suffering, in fact, in the Bible, you'll find that word 39 times, and I mean 41 times, and, and it's translated suffer, 39 of them. So, And the concept of this suffering thing is interesting because it not only reveals how you are with your relationships and friendships, but even material possessions and pets, <laughs> right? Mm. I came to the startling conclusion that at the point at which I had decided to quit suffering was the point at which... The relationship ended. If I decided to quit suffering with old red, you know what would happen? It wouldn't be long and there'd be a new red, old red out there <laughs> or whatever. Transversely, the more I fell in love with family, friends, or even a pet, the longer I am not only willing to suffer, but honored. Honored to suffer. And, and I'm sure you can relate. Anybody that's been in love once <laughs> or many times or with lots of people, if you fall madly in love with a child who is perfectly behaved, you will still suffer because, you know, what if they face some kind of surgery? You're going to suffer. Or if they're out late at night, even though they told you where they were going to be. I don't know about you, but as a father, I can tell you there's suffering involved in that. Can you imagine the prodigal's father? You think he suffered? Or David with Absalom or almost unthinkable Jesus with Judas. He washed his feet. Right? So the risk to love brings life. But the more you do what Jesus commanded, love and love and love and love, guess what's going to come with that? A great deal of suffering, which really begins to just cause me some concern, except if you look in Romans chapter 5, it says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So when, and, and, and this is a live show today, so I'm asking you to think in your mind, when did you love a car so much that you suffered and suffered, but it paid off? You were so glad you went through that. When did that happen for you? I would love to hear that story. 866-348-7884. Eight six six three four truth if you're digitally gifted. When did you love a mechanic so much that in spite of his continual problems, you suffered and suffered, but it paid off? Of course, I'm sure you got a story like that. 866-348-7884. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this. I know there's probably been somebody or something in your life that you just, you didn't know what else to do but hang on and continue to suffer and suffer and suffer, and the Holy Spirit poured more love into your heart, and somehow you're able to do it. And all the people around you couldn't understand why in the world, why in the world is he hanging on the way he is, or she? Why is she hanging on the way she is? I hate to bring it. Well, I'll just say yeah, go ahead. I have a very, very, very uh, exact situation, exactly what you're talking about. And I'm so torn about what to do because it's an employee and and I have loved and loved and loved and forgiven and forgiven and forgiven and and I'm just really torn and it causes dissension in the ranks the things that I have tolerated and put up and uh, put up with and it's and, and just, that's an awesome point because the, the interesting thing about love is that you, you love people in truth. So it may be that in spite of you loving the guy, that a good way to love him may be to let him find out that there's consequences to his actions. <laughs> yes, and and yes. you went through that 
and we all have with our children that, you know, love them sometimes, tell them, you got to show them that, you know, putting your hand on that stove is going to get you burned. I mean, it's going to be hot. And and so part of love does not necessarily mean that tolerating bad behavior or, yeah. or, or things along those lines. But exactly, I would love to hear your story of when you suffered and you suffered and you suffered. The, 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 the point is not whether or not you ended the employment. It's whether you ended the love, whether you decided to quit suffering after that, because that's even trickier. 866-348-7884 is a number to call in. We would love to hear your story because we know that your suffering will help produce hope in somebody else because they go, oh, wow, there, maybe there is hope. Maybe there is a reason that God's keeping me in this. Maybe there is something that's going to be at the end of this. Um, 866, we need to hear your story. 866 348 Seven eight eight four. Of course, we got all this at ChristianCarGuy.com. The Jesus Labor Love Car Repair Labor for Single Moms, Widows, Families in Crisis. We've, you know, constantly got opportunities there to suffer with folks that are really in a bad way and be able to pray with them and those kind of things. It's all there at ChristianCarGuy.com as well as Christian Car Guy Theater Podcast. All that stuff. But we have John is in Seattle, Washington. He's got a 2007 and a. Kia, and it sounds like he's suffering. John, you're on the Christian Car Guy Show. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wow. Just as we came to the break, I got you. But I hope you'll hang on with us. And when we yes, get sir. back, we'll find out how you're suffering with your with your Kia. And hopefully we'll have an answer or maybe one of our other listeners with. We got so much more Christian Car Guy Show coming up. Call us with your suffering story. 866-348-7884. To the cross I cling Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do sing At the cross you beckon me How long do you suffer? That's the question. How long are you willing to suffer? What are you willing to put up with and how long will you do that and what's the benefit of that and most of all i'd love to hear your story <laughs> yes it has to do some people suffer along with cars or suffer along with mechanics or suffer along with all sorts of interesting things we would love to hear what happened in your life 866-348-7884-866-34 truth we got john is suffering right now with an ac problem in washington john Thank you for hanging on through the break. What's going on? Certainly. Uh, first time caller. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I got to say with that intro, <clears throat> you, you made me think I called into a show that was a lot deeper than having a problem with my car. So <laughs> wow. I hope my problem can uh, <laughs> can uh, uh, come up to the standard here. Well, the good news is both Bob and I have been known to be extremely shallow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. In fact, um, it's, it's, well, as we were discussing your problem, I hadn't even mentioned this, but there is some humor in it, maybe. Uh, you know, Bob, okay. my friend Bob here, if, if you hadn't listened before, you, he owns 109 You Pull It, which is a junkyard. So he's my Christian junkyard guy, just to show how shallow we really are. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> well, we like to go deep, too. But anyway, when I was describing your problem with, you know, we've got a 2007 Kia Sedona with AC problems, his immediate response was like to anybody being the, his line of work, he said, crush it. But I'm, uh, I, have that, yeah. I have aggravated a lot of my friends. <laughs> One of my buddies got me to get in his truck and we ride down the road and so what do you think's wrong with my transmission? What do you, what do you think I need to do? I said, crush it. <laughs> he was so aggravated with me, and then we had a big knee slap and laugh. You but, know, that's not suffering long. That's nothing to do with what we're talking about today, Bob. But anyway, exactly. John, what's what's your Kia doing? We'll try to help. Well, um, it, it's an EC problem, and it's um, I guess there's a couple things I'd like to ask about, and I'm going to try to not be too verbose. Um, basically, uh, the AC quit working – about about five or six years ago is when it started having its problems. 
And we uh, last year in May, I actually ended up at the dealership. And they, um, aside from a change in all the piping and, and tubes, it was almost a full reset, right? That um, compressor was condenser. And, oh, yeah, um, I would think. And then, uh, and then uh, right, I mean, it was like a week after. So it, it's a little bit after the one year, but about a, a, it seemed like two weeks after it quit working again. And, uh, you know, it just it smelled like a sham. You know, right after their year warranty, the thing quits. And so we've, uh, um, I took it back to them, and they basically said it was a condenser leak and that it was going to be another $1,200. And so I just kind of threw my hands up because, you know, uh, a lot of us don't keep $1,200 in, in the kitty for uh, AC. So um, so I, I've tried to, I, I, I got a can of um, refrigerant with stop leak, mm-hmm. and it's that seemed to work that worked intermittently for about a week and a half uh, and i was just kind of assuming well that's probably because i didn't draw a perfect vacuum but it at least blew cool air cool air for a bit it actually on a drive it would blow cold and then it would blow luke cold and then it would blow cold <laughs> um, you know jesus is going to spit you out of your mouth with blowing that luke cold stuff that's, that's right <laughs> That's right. Well, exactly. John, if I could interrupt, interrupt for a minute, you, you, you bring out so many wonderful points that we all learn from. Um, if, if you listen to my intro, you'll notice Barney Fife saying you got to nip things in the bud. And mm-hmm. had you nipped the air conditioning system in the bud years ago when you originally had it, you see, if you let an air conditioner go any length of time without being under pressure, then moisture gets into the system and once you do that, like you said, you ended up having to replace everything because it all it all deteriorates, and you never really even know if you get all the moisture out of the system. And so it really is it's a complicated issue when you let something go. The longer you let it go, that's the whole idea, nipping something in the bud. And you did the right thing, by the way. It immediately take it back to the dealer. But now that he's told you you needed $1,200, let me share – what I did with old red, because you know, I it, you, you may have heard me describe that I have this truck that has four hundred and six thousand miles on it, and you know, it has any place it can find to leak something, it is it tries it all the time. It leaks air out of the tires, it leaks antifreeze. It, if if, it, if there's something that can leak, it it's tried it on me, and so I don't even want to know. And I'm sure a lot of great mechanics listening to the show right now is probably going to cringe at what I'm fixed to say, but. I probably have run, oh, four or five bottles of that radiator stop link through Old Red. And, you know, it's an amazing thing about the fourth one. <laughs> Whatever it was, that you know, it finally, it's like blood coagulating. It finally figured out how to, how to block off the leak and away it went. So before I spent $1,200 on a 2007 Kia, Kia with that had the issues that you've had, I would, I would run another bottle or two of that stop leak through the, uh, condenser and, and see if that can't get the, the the pin leak because those condensers it doesn't take anything um to get a little pinhole in it does it bob and then they're right i mean there's nothing you can do but replace the condenser or if you get the stop leak to work which believe me that stuff it, it's it's amazing some of the things that these stop leak things will do now i've got some in my wife's trucks radiator i've got <laughs> I, I love the stuff does that help at all john no, it does. Um, but I mean, the the uh, one problem it's it's uh, advanced to is that it wants to just keep popping the fuse. Um, so I'm just I'm wondering. Yeah, I mean, it might it may be something that's beyond my, you know. Yeah, what I, I would do, do, I wouldn't take it back to the dealership, but see if what I would actually do. And here's my advice to a lot of people, and I hope this helps somebody, is go to like your Napa. Not Advance or those places because they don't sell to the to the repair shops. But if you go to like Napa and you ask them who's a good mechanic to look at this A thing AC thing from me on this Kia Sedoa, the people at Napa are like the parks men are like nurses. The nurses know the best doctors, the parks people know the best mechanics, and they will point you to an independent mechanic that can look at that, find out what's going on with the fuse, and hopefully get your leak going in the right direction. John, I know you had another question, so feel free to stay on through the break if you want. 
Suffering suck attacks. Suffering suck attacks. How long do you suffer? And if you've ever eaten succotash, you probably have. <laughs> I would have to suffer to eat it. I don't know about you, Bob. Have you ever seen it? It's lima beans and corn oh, and, yeah. oh, my word, it's succotash. But anyway, the question today on the Christian Car Guy show, how long do you suffer with a bad car, with a bad mechanic, with a bad relationship? And all those things. And we had a, a caller call in, and our producer, Kim, took the call. And, Kim, this one's kind of hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's very hard. Um, the, the Long story short, she said that she had been in a bad relationship for about four. Well, actually, actually, she was married for four or five years, and it, it was, it was kind of bad. And also that she was dependent upon this person. Well, the spouse left. And now she's left, you know, pretty much holding the bag. And she wanted to know how to deal with this type of suffering. That now that she was totally dependent upon this person, even though it was a bad relationship, now what to do now that now she's on her own? Well, as I was praying through that, fortunately, I had the break to to pray about this. But feel free to jump in, Bob, or even Andy, who's over here, um, with something that you're thinking. But I... I I uh, was married before, and my first wife um, was schizophrenic, and uh, it was horrible. And she ended up actually living out the rest of her life in an insane asylum. And she had a son um, that I took on, and he had a perpetence, per- propensity to run away. And now he's he's almost forty years old, and um, it, it, the, the amount of suffering in, in loving him has been phenomenal. However, you know, I, I can tell you that I have continued to love him for all those 40 years, and, and he's, he's continually still running away and running away from God, which is even scarier. But I got text from him this week. And, and the, the joy of that adventure with both his mother and with him um, was bringing Jesus. In other words, <laughs> there's something about suffering that puts you right at the foot of the cross, and Jesus can hug you in a way that only Jesus can hug you, and your relationship with Jesus grows in that time where he's the only person that can meet that need right there. Hard to realize that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you got. And I'd heard that and I never realized it until I went through the things that I've gone through and I was just stripped down to nothing and and Jesus was all I had. And uh, and for those listening that don't know, I, I'm pretty sure I know the incident that Bob's talking about. He lost his son, Rob. Um, it was 27 at the time, Bob? Uh, he was 26. He died uh, uh, January the 9th, 2014. And, um, you know, it was it was just galactically huge, but I was just stripped completely down. Um, my future, uh, my family, you know, everything was just so shaken at that time. And so I don't have any profound oh this is what you should do in that situation because i don't know i don't even i'm not even close to knowing what to do other than this i know that i know that i know that if you seek jesus he is going to come and he will guide you in a way to continue to love somebody that's unlovable i mean he he he's the answer and in that I am certain, I'm 100% certain will come life. I can give you that hope that I, I've, I've been through some of that. I haven't endured what you've endured. I'm not suggesting that I have, but through the ones that I have and when I, when I called out to Jesus and when he came and he walked with me, not only was I able to see some sense in what was going on, but he provided 
ways to love a person that just blew me away. I mean, I was like, oh, that worked. <laughs> how did that come out? You know, how did, how did this thing happen? And uh, example after example with both Leslie and his mother of things that where he came to my rescue, um, and, and that's what I would say. But there are other people who may have another thing to say for our friend who called in that may have their own story of someone that left or some car that they, they continued to love. Really, you can tell there's people out there that are hurting and they need the hope that you have for the way Jesus came for you and that your testimony is where the power comes from. It says that right next. You'll receive power from on high when you give your testimony. How did Jesus show up for you? And we, this lady, needs your power. We need it. 866 348 7884. And you, you even went through some of this this, this last couple of weeks, didn't you, Bob? Last, uh, last month, I had the honor to uh, host this show, and I talked about uh, how God had made it possible for me to get to Aiken, South Carolina, and rescue my son and uh, my stepson and, uh, and make it back in time to hear my preacher's last, last uh, sermon at Oak Forest. And... Um, he left and and you know i knew he had new people in his life and new church people in his life and he didn't need a bunch of bombardment from me and everything and we had a new preacher that came in right behind him and and um but i just didn't see what a huge void there was in my life because this man had done so many things for me he 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 just fulfilled so many needs I had and then uh, this week it just all kind of came to a head and and my life was really really it was very unsettled I I couldn't work out work through problems I had no patience with things I patience had had so many things were just not going well for me and uh, so I, I got in my vehicle and I drove over to the church I went and just to check and see if uh, my new preacher was there and uh, asked her if she had a minute or 45. <laughs> and we really spent some great time together and I gave her a lot of my history. And through this process, I accepted the fact that God had furnished me something to fill the void that Darren had left when he left. Uh, you know, I had a perfectly good preacher right there, but I just not had not accepted her as, you know, the the fulfiller of my needs. And after forty five minutes, I have a new preacher, and I have fully accepted her as such. And uh, my life was dramatically changed this week. I mean, just it made such a difference for me, and uh, I just didn't see it coming. I didn't see that I had that big of a need, but I sure did, and God sure took care of it for me. And uh, Miss Julie, I am so grateful to you. That's cool. And you know that the the whole issue of every single day when we, you know, walk out, if we, if we love people, there's going to be suffering involved. Oh yeah. And. You know, how to love Darren in this new season where he's got his new church and his new family. How do I encourage him? How do I love my new pastor? How do I go about doing that when, you know, sometimes this wasn't necessarily my choice. But, you know, when people look at your life, you know, can they tell how long you suffer? (laughs) Well, these grooves in my forehead and this white hair probably might be a clue. (laughs) And let me just point out to you something you may not have thought of, but I, I... I've seen it over the years with cars that if I am going to buy a used car, one of the things that's very important to me, especially if it's an import car, a Highline import, European import, is the service records. Now, if I look at service records and I see that they've never been at the same place twice, that's a lot different than if I look at service records and I can see they got the oil changed religiously for a word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, there's the stamp where they did it at, you know, 5,000 miles at 10,000, 15. When you see consistently done by the same person in the same way and whatever, what does that, what does that tell you about the way the car was maintained versus this one 
that's been serviced at 40 different shops, in which, by the way, you know, everybody does things a little bit different. And I, if you're just looking at a pedigree. And so, you know, if I look in my own life, you know, where is it that I'm struggling here suffering? Let me just tell you, barbers. <laughs> I, you know, so he said, well, Robbie, you never, you never seem to go the same one twice. Well, you know, I'm not learning how to suffer through barbering. Where is it that might be showing up in your life, in your car, whatever? We got so much more suffering coming up. I know you're looking forward to that, but we would love to hear your story, your story of where it came out and Jesus came through for you. 866-348-7884. We'd love to take your call on the other side of this break. So much more coming up. the cross I claim Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do sing At the cross you beckon me You draw me How to long do you I suffer? That's the question. We got some wonderful calls coming in. 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. We got one more segment for you to call in and share some hope, I hope, (laughs) on how God came through for you when you were suffering long. Maybe you were suffering long with a car or a mechanic or whatever your situation may be. We would love to hear the story. We got Ed is in Kernersville, North Carolina, and he's got some words for us. Ed, you're on the Christian Car Guy show. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, I love your subject, uh, but I have a little difficulty with the words you attach to something material and something utilitarian like a car. Uh, I didn't have any love for it, and I didn't suffer with it per se, but uh, I kept a 1990, well, I kept a car for 20 years, and I just sold it, actually sold it back to the mechanic Really? Uh, that had kept the car for that length of time, uh, kept, you know, serviced the car for me. He had maintained and, it. Uh, uh... I bought it new, and uh, now I have a, a, a different car. I, I don't buy anything but used cars. So I have a different car now. And I'm going to keep it, I guess that's the last car. I'm 75 years old, so I doubt very seriously I'm going to buy another car. <laughs> Can I ask but what kind of car that was? It was a Toyota Camry. Excellent. That's awesome. And I, kept I, it. I, bought it, I bought it brand new. It was a program car. I bought it brand new at, at a certain Toyota, a Toyota dealership in Winston-Salem. And uh, it was a car. I didn't suffer with it there, and I've gone through a lot of things. Oh, by the way, I love the Lord, and I, and I, I, uh, I, I, I I'm learning uh, how. Well, to Ed, what I was, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, you know? but as I pointed out to the caller earlier, see, I can be really shallow. <laughs> no, no, and no, I can no, be, no, no. I, I can be really no. deep. I understand, but I, but but see, for me. And everybody's different, and that's the beauty beauty of this world. Is that for me, I love my truck. I'll be the first person to admit it. And absolutely, anybody loves that truck. Anybody who knows me knows that I do. And so when it when it got to hurting here a year or so ago, and I had to put an engine, there was a certain amount of suffering that was accompanied to that. Now I'm not in any way, any even remotely comparing that to the suffering that I that for my wife or my children or or whatever. But interestingly, I would point out. That for me, if I was going to quit suffering with old red, then the relationship would be over, and and that's the the interesting thing I find of the of not to say that people should love a vehicle. I'm not indicating that, or I'm not trying to push people in that direction. However, I do push people like you do in the wisdom of 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 keeping a vehicle a long time and and how. Essentially, that's a good stewardship as far as I'm concerned, and you've done a great job of doing that, Ed. I commend you. Well, thank you, but, you know, that's that's how I 
and now in that in the process, these last four years, I can really, for me, define some suffering. I I lost my wife. I have uh, I have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. I lost a son who forty six years old, and all of this is within three in three years. The car was pretty constant. And there were times when I probably, I didn't even think about changing the car, but I love people. And I, you know, it, like you said, I understand the use of the word, you know. But yeah, um, it's, it's, it's I think cool. that God gives us things to use, and all of this is pretty temporary anyway. So I think he gives us things to use and not to get our underwear in a bunch about them, and just use them. Oh, until yeah, they, I you know. agree. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. God so, bless you, brother. I appreciate you calling in and your stewardship, yeah. and we'll be praying yeah, for thank you. you. Thank you, brother. Take care, man. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Good show. All right, bye. Well, I know that, you know, the, the one caller that called in and was sharing on suffering the loss of a, of a spouse is a difficult subject, and I, I do have Andy in the in the studio with me and during the break he mentioned that he would like to speak to that an issue as he's actually been going through a little bit of that himself and so you know it's a hard question how do you suffer with that spouse that's left yeah just a bit on my story um uh i think it's almost seven years ago that me and my wife separated and you know it would be always what i felt like had been a pr- pretty close family but not perfect and so um through all that you know when it first hit it hit me hard it was you know i think there was a mention of being dependent i i was the provider so i didn't really have to worry about that part of it but i i got to the point where i didn't want to go to work or i was the, probably at risk at, at 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 losing my job at times because it just hit me that hard but all i can say is is that through this process it's been very difficult it's never what it's nothing i had parents that are uh, divorced my mama was married twice my stepdad wasn't very good and all i knew is i didn't want that for my life and um it happened and it was a disruption that i could have rebelled and went the other way or i could accept what god had now i've struggled with it there have been times that i've been just not really happy with you know the way things have ha- happened but then you know over time um god has done some great things i just got back last week from a uh, a boot camp in colorado that you know addressed men's hearts and i just thought how far I had come in this time these seven years of you know just deepening my relationship with god understanding really what happened in all of that and what god really has for me because the suffering there's always good fruit that comes out of it um as much as we don't like to go through that i thought i thought the christian life was a nice happy life that you just kind of uh you know you got what you wanted and uh on this side and then it was even better in heaven but it's not that way i mean when you look at the bible his servants constantly are suffering but in that you always see the evidence of that suffering and then that restoration and then the strengthening of that love relationship with god you see it with you know david you see it with peter you see it with paul you see it all throughout the bible and they get to the point where there's like trusting god is what it's all about we have ann is in hendersonville hello ann i know i didn't want it well i'm trying to get that to come up i guess she's talking to my producer and so (laughs) <laughs> we in the of that. Well, Bob, you know, here we go into this season with your new pastor and uh, with your new em- with your employee, and and I'm I'm curious, I'd, where do we go? But to the cross to figure out, what, you know, with Jesus, how we're gonna, what's the next step? Well, like I say, I didn't even realize I had a need and and where all my affliction was coming from, and uh, it was just made crystal clear to me and um this week and and the uh solution to my problem was thrust upon me so it was an awesome thing and uh god's always picked me up dusted me off set me on my feet and pointed me in the right direction so i'm grateful for that this week yeah i guess 
you know, the thing that I would challenge myself, if not you, with is, is love is a risky business. And, you know, it's pretty much a clear commandment that we're supposed to love one another. And that risk can come with a great deal of suffering. And I do mean people, not necessarily cars here. And so, yeah, how about step out in that risk and see if you can't ask Jesus to come in and fill you with the love long enough to suffer another hour, another day, whatever it is he gives you. We thank you for listening to the Christian Car Guy Show. My wonderful host, it's Bob, with, with 109, you pull it in, of course, uh, Andy. And we would challenge you this week to slow down. Jesus walked everywhere he went.